Hey guys and welcome back. Today I'm really excited to share my super low cost kayak that I built out of sticks, cardboard, and stretch wrap. Hopefully watching this will help you on your journey towards building your own simple kayak. And if you want to just skip to the end and watch me paddle around the lake, that's cool too. Spoiler alert, this thing actually floats. There were three things that really sent me on this journey of building my own kayak. The first thing was becoming a member of my local makerspace in Minneapolis. This ended up being an awesome resource of tools and like-minded people who just like to build stuff. It's also where I found this. This kayak had been hanging around the shop and it really sent me on my way towards building my own. Around the same time I stumbled across this video where the guy makes a simple kayak by bending sticks around a tree to make the ribs and then he stretches plastic wrap around the whole thing as the skin. Lastly, I was in school at this time and learning how to use computer-aided design programs like SketchUp and AutoCAD. With the help of these programs, I managed to do a couple of things. The first thing I did was I found a kayak model on the SketchUp 3D warehouse that somebody else had already built. The second thing I did was convert that model into a simple PDF image that I could send to the laser cutter. At this time, I was just learning how to use the laser cutter at the makerspace. I encourage you if you're inspired to make your own kayak to not be deterred if you don't have access to equipment or software like this. Your design process could be as simple as making some hoops out of sticks. The design of this kayak, as far as how I actually was going to build it, was a constant design work in progress. In the end, I actually built two kayaks. The first one being a prototype skeleton where I solved the main design problems and the second being the finished floating boat made out of sticks. In the beginning I was convinced that I was going to use reclaimed pallet wood as the main structural component, but I soon realized, at least from my first go, that cardboard was going to be a much easier option. So with all my files ready, I quickly and accurately cut out all of my 11 ribs. The original design also contained these end pieces, which I never ended up getting a chance to use, but they were pretty cool. Back at home I started assembling the ribs to a long piece of scrap wood I got at the shop. I messed around with wood glue and quickly realized that I needed to buy a hot glue gun. This is how the frame looked with all the ribs spaced at 12 inches apart. The final design was actually slightly shorter by a couple feet, and I'll get to that later. <laughs> a few more pieces of scrap wood, and I finally had a pretty good looking prototype. Proof enough for me that I could indeed successfully make my own kayak. So after neglecting my prototype kayak in the guest room for a few months, I decided it was time to actually figure out how to get this thing floating. At this point, I was pretty motivated to build the entire skeleton out of cardboard. I was messing around with two-part epoxy at this time, and I knew that, if I did it right, I could make the kayak strong enough using just these two building materials. In the end, however, I decided to stick with the building materials that Mother Nature had already provided. I decided to use buckthorn, which is a small to medium sized bushy tree that's an invasive species in Minnesota and is actually a pretty big problem. I spent a lot of time with my trusty Swiss army knife cutting down and processing these pokey little sticks. I wanted to use full 10 foot length sticks, but they were so massive and unwieldy that I had to settle for 4 foot segments. Thank you. 
This time I also cut out more cardboard ribs. This time I made them four sheets thick and made sure to alternate the corrugated grain to make them more strong. I also applied the first layer of two-part epoxy to them. You can see here me clipping off some of the hardened sharp pieces. Later I applied a second coat of two-part epoxy which I'm pretty embarrassed about and the end result would have turned out a lot better if I would have taken the time to properly coat them in epoxy. Attaching the sticks to the cardboard ribs was pretty straightforward with duct tape. I think in the end it might have been easier to use string and wrap it in a continuous fashion through the ribs and around the stringers. I completed the center segment of the kayak and by this time had to resupply with twice as many sticks and another roll of duct tape. So I'm almost done with the kayak here and running into a couple problems. The first one being that I need to attach this part better. And the second one is that it's a little crooked. Is that okay? Stay tuned. Finishing the skeleton required a couple more hours of duct taping as well as a few other finishing touches. First I added two more reinforcing strips of wood near the top with string. This wood actually came from the kayak at the makerspace. And lastly I added these little foam squares. The only thing that these are for is to protect the plastic wrap from the sharp corners of the now hardened epoxy cardboard. It's ready to go. Now all we have to do is wrap it in plastic wrap, hope that it doesn't get punctured, and it looks firm enough that it might not break in half. I'm confident that it'll be able to displace enough water, but I'm not sure if it's gonna snap in half. Okay, we're gonna get a final weight on the scale. This only weighs 15 pounds. Because the odds of success are 100%. I'm pretty confident. Annika's at about, what are your odds? Um, I don't know, like 70? 70-30?
technically it works. <laughs> <laughs> and there he goes off into the sunset. <laughs> It's a little low to the ground. It's a little low in the water, you don't have room for waves. Yeah. I wonder if you could add some like weights in there. I don't know. Like, uh, like some grass? Feels pretty good though. Kind of, I'm scared. You just need a cereal box and you can make a rudder. I was really close to flipping it. Okay, this is not because it was leaking, because that almost flipped over. Hi. It still works two days later. It Mike still works, everybody. Mike loves Evan. Whatever Evan does, Mike will do. <laughs> Hayden, what do you think? It's wonderful. No, I'm, I'm going home in this. <laughs> I've already decided. <laughs> we'll set you you get tired halfway through the lake. It seriously wouldn't be that long of a walk if you, just, if you just got out right there. Double R investment. <laughs> <laughs>